Let me ask you a question. If you were taking the DET and you had to remember the English name of this, would you be able to remember it? If you're thinking, uh, is it Wi-Fi box? Then you need to watch this video. Hello, I'm Francis from Last Minute English. In this video, we're looking at technology. We're going to learn 47 high-level words and phrases all about technology because it's a really common topic in the DET. So you need to be prepared. Now, I've divided this 47 words into a few different areas. The first one we're going to look at is hardware. So hardware is like the physical things, the physical types of technology that we use in our daily life. So for example, a very simple one, you probably know the word TV. <laughs> I hope you know the word TV and you know the word computer. But let's take a look at the Wi-Fi box. So what's the actual name of that in English? Any idea? So we could call it a modem or we could call it a router. And that's the level of vocabulary that you need to have if you want to get 120 or even much higher when you take the DET. So let's look through eight more examples of hardware. And these are much more specific than TV and computer. So the first one is trackpad. Now we can say trackpad or we can say touchpad. And that's the thing on your laptop that you, you move around and then it, it, it's like a mouse, but it's there on the computer. The next one is monitor. So monitor is when you have like a separate screen to the rest of your computer. And if you have like a desktop computer, then you might have a monitor. You might also buy a second monitor if you're doing lots of work and you need to look between the two screens. The next one is a joystick, and that's like the thing that you move around if you're playing games. Then we have a power bank. So power bank, you could say battery, but power bank is a higher level way. You can carry it around with you. You can use it to charge your phone if your phone's out of battery. The next one is sensor. So a sensor is something that can detect maybe like your face or very often your fingerprint. Like I use my fingerprint, I use the sensor to open my laptop. Then we have headset. So headset is the thing that you put on your head. Now there's different types. For example, a VR headset is very different to say like a headset that you wear if you're working in a call center and it has like the, the headphones and the little microphone that comes around. But both of them are called headsets. Then we have stylus. So a stylus is the official name of the pen that you use if like you're writing on your iPad or if you have a Remarkable or a Kindle Scribe. I have a Kindle Scribe and I'm very, very happy. I, I use it all the time. I use my stylus for writing ideas down. And then finally, a slot. So the slot is like the hole that you put USB-C in or, or things like that. So we can say whole, but slot is better. By the way, if you're enjoying this video and you want to see more videos about how to get a really high score in DET, make sure to like and subscribe down here. So that was hardware. Now let's talk about functions. So what technology can do. And we've got seven words here. They're all verbs and they're all high level ways of saying how technology can help us basically. So the first one is facilitate. That means to make things easier or make them happen. Then streamline. Streamline means to make things more efficient, to get rid of like when we're wasting time or we're wasting energy. The third is enable. Ena if we enable something, we make that thing possible. If we integrate, that means we are combining two different things or two different systems together. Automate comes from the word automatically, or maybe I should say automatically comes from the word automate. And it means make something happen without us forcing it to happen. So when something happens automatically, like an automatic door, people walk towards it and it's automated to open. Then we have execute. Now execute has two meanings. One of them is to like kill someone, chop their head off or something because they're being punished. The other meaning is, is not quite so violent. The other meaning is when we make something happen, we give it a command and say the technology will carry out what we say. It will do what we say. So finally, generate. So generate is 
producing something. For example, generative AI like ChatGPT, it's producing things when we ask it to. So that's a lot of vocabulary. And it's important that we try to remember it and know where and when to use it. So let's do a little bit of practice. I've got a real DET question for you. What you have to do is read that passage, you'll have 30 seconds, and choose which of those words that we've just learned is the most suitable to fill in that gap. All right, have a try now. Okay, so did you get it right? So the clue was chatbot. So chatbot usually powered by AI, they generate, they generate the answers that people want. By the way, this video is all about uh, technology vocabulary, but I would love to know, I've got a question for you, which other area you would like me to make a DET vocabulary video about, okay? In the past, for example, we've talked about people, we've talked about memories, this is technology, but which other area would be useful for you? Let me know in the comments. Now, chatbots are a type of AI, and actually AI is our third area of discussion. And it's very important to know lots of AI vocabulary because it's such a big topic nowadays. So the first word we need to know is model, an AI model. So that's an AI system that's trained to do something specific. For example, it's trained to write text or it's trained to answer certain questions. Then we have a tough word, algorithm. Algorithm, so the stress is at the start, al, algorithm. And that is a series of code instructions that the AI or just um, like software in general uses to do something. So it's step, step, step. Then we have prompt. So the prompt is the question or the instruction that you give to AI. And what do you get back? You get an output. That's the thing that the AI generates for you, the answer. And then finally, bias. So bias is like an unfair preference or like preferring something in an unbalanced way. And that's a problem that some people are worried about with AI. And we can also use some very useful adjectives about AI. So the first one is responsive. So that means it quickly comes back to you. Then we have predictive, which means it's able to guess or predict what might happen in the future. Or it might be adaptive. So adaptive means that it can change depending on what you ask it to do or say your level. For example, the DET is an adaptive exam because if you're doing very well, it gets harder. If you're doing not so well, it gets easier. And then we have sophisticated, which is like advanced or high level. And finally, versatile. Versatile means we can use it for many different functions. So that's some vocabulary that's more about AI. Of course, we can also use different words and some of the same words as well to talk about technology in general. So here's a little, a little test for you. This is a fill in the blanks question. I want you to look at it. I'm gonna give you 20 seconds and I want you to see if you can guess what the missing word is, okay? It's not a word that we've looked at so far, so you have to try to remember it from your own English knowledge. All right, have a try now. Okay, so welcome back. So what do you think? What could it be? So the answer is outdated, outdated. That means that something is quite old fashioned and it's not very useful anymore. Some things are old fashioned, but they're nice. Like say like old music from the 1920s or the 1950s, but we still like it. But outdated means it's kind of, 
it's not useful. We don't want it anymore. So here are some more words that we can use about technology in general. First of all, innovative. So if something is innovative, it's doing something new and different. The verb here is to innovate. That's to come up with new ideas. Then we have cutting edge. Cutting edge means it uses the most recent technology. It's not using technology that we've had for ages. It's something new and very advanced. We also have intuitive intuitive so the stress is on the chu intuitive and that means something that is easy to use and feels natural to use and very related to that is user friendly so if something's user friendly like a piece of software it's easy for the user to understand how to use it if something is customizable so custom my customizable that means that you can adjust it you can change it based on how you like it for example a very simple way might be if you're using software on light mode you might change it to using it on dark mode you've customized it that means that software is customizable if something is portable it means we can carry it and use it in different places. It's not so big and so heavy and so difficult to move that we have to keep it in one place. We can take it wherever we want, like a laptop. And finally, robust. Robust means something that is strong and secure and we can trust it. Now we always hope that technology is going to work, but it doesn't always work. For example, I'll give you a very good example. Right now the camera that I'm filming on is having some problems. It's having some problems focusing on my face. You may have noticed it, you may not. Probably after I've told you, you'll start to notice it. Uh, but let's talk about problems that technology can have. The first one, we can say that it is glitchy. So that's the adjective. The noun is a glitch. And a glitch or being glitchy means it's having kind of regular problems. And those can be many different types of problems. Glitchy is quite a wide thing, but it means that the technology is having problems. Then we have laggy. So laggy, again, is adjective. The uh, verb and the noun is lag. A lag, some lag. Uh, big lag and to lag and it means when something you, you might know this from playing computer games if like suddenly the computer game you do that and then it happens <laughs> and there's that space there's you have to wait that means it's laggy so it's a little bit slow then we have incompatible incompatible so there's two stresses there there's in and there's pa incompatible and that means when two things don't work with each other. For example, if you have an Apple, like a, a MacBook or something, and you try to use something and it can only be used on Windows, then that software is incompatible. Then we have flimsy. Flimsy is the opposite of robust. So flimsy is like low quality, it's weak, it's easy to break. Then we have overcomplicated. Now, you know what complicated means? It means like not simple. Overcomplicated means it's definitely too complicated. So sometimes things have to be a little bit complicated, but if it's overcomplicated, it means it's very, very, very complicated. And then finally, invasive. So invade is to go into something when you're not invited. So invasive is when software is trying to find out maybe some secrets about you. It might be stealing your data, things like that. It's going into areas where you don't want it to go. And we've also got four expressions that describe when something's going wrong. So you could say, the screen suddenly froze. So if something freezes, it means it goes like that. It stops moving. You can't get it to do anything. Or you could say, the software immediately crashed. So crash is when it shuts down on its own. Or you could say, an important update failed. So fail, you're preparing for the DET. You know what fail means, the opposite of pass. But here, it means that the update was trying to happen. It was trying to get to the newest version of the software, but for some reason, maybe the internet cut out and that update wasn't successful, it failed. And you can say, my laptop started to overheat. So that's when the laptop itself is getting really hot. So there might be a problem with the fan, for example. 
Now, if you are preparing for the DET and you want to make sure that you don't fail, <laughs> that your update of your life doesn't fail, then we've got a great course for you. It's our DET Complete Preparation course. It's designed to help you score 120 the first time you take the test. And if you want more information about that, you can find it here under the video. The last area we're going to talk about is your use of technology because some people are addicted to technology and other people like don't like to use it at all. So let's learn some short phrases all about how much and how you feel when you use technology. So first, if you are digitally literate, that means that you're pretty comfortable using technology. For example, you might say that Younger generations are generally pretty digital, digitally literate. <laughs> Make sure you've practiced saying it. Digitally literate. Oh, that's hard. Digitally literate. There we go. Uh, but older generations are not so digitally literate. Then someone can be a tech enthusiast. If you are an enthusiast, it means you enjoy using something. You like doing something. For example, I'm a cake enthusiast. <laughs> I enjoy eating cakes. By the way, I don't think I've ever said on this channel, but my favorite, I talk about cakes a lot and coffee, but my favorite dessert uh, is called apple crumble. Uh, and that's a, quite a traditional British dessert. Um, so if you're ever in the UK, if you come to study in the UK, for example, or you come to visit, make sure you have an apple crumble and custard. That's the best thing to go with apple crumble. Now, if you are a tech enthusiast, you really, really like using your phone, we might say that you are glued to your phone. That means like you imagine that it's stuck in your hand and your head is stuck to it like that. So you're glued to your phone, you're using it a lot. We might also say you're unable to switch off. Now, that can be you're unable to stop using your phone. It can also mean that you're not able to like relax. And for example, if you have a lot of studying to do and you're very stressed and you just keep working and working and working, you're unable to switch off. It means you can't find the mental peace to relax. Then if you are a doom scroller, that means you're just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and you're looking at lots of negative things and it's making you feel worse, but you can't get away. You're glued to your phone. You're just scrolling and scrolling, a doom scroller. So a lot of those are about using technology a lot, but maybe you are a technophobe. That's the opposite. So you're not an enthusiast. In fact, you don't like technology. So that makes you a technophobe. Or you might be a casual user. Casual means like, oh, I use it sometimes. So I use my phone maybe once a day for 10 minutes, it's fine. You're not addicted to it. You're not obsessed. You're not glued to your phone. Okay, so there we go. You've learned almost 50 high level words and phrases about very specific aspects of technology. So make sure you review these a lot. And if you do, you'll be really well prepared when you get to the DET. Remember as well, if you enjoyed this video, you should like and subscribe so you don't miss all of our future videos. And if you are preparing for the DET, we've got our full preparation course that's designed to help you score 120 or higher the first time you take the test. So click the link down here to find out more. Now, this is not our only DET vocabulary video. In fact, I've got another one that you should watch next. It's our DET vocabulary all about your memory. So talking about things in the past. So the link is just up here or you can click the link under the video. That's the next way for you to keep improving your vocabulary and making sure you get a high score in DET. I'm Francis from Last Minute English. Thank you very much for watching. Good luck in your DET. I'll see you next time.